Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire which might be the last good Harry Potter movie it becomes much more mature as it deals with teen life puberty hormonal changes emotions mood swings relationships dating being brave and the feeling that people want to avoid rejection Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter Rupert Grint as Ron Weasley Emma Watson as Emile Granger Michael Gumbin as Dumbledore Brendan Gleeson as Mad Eye Moody Robbie Coltrane as Hagrid Ralph Fiennes as Voldemort Maggie Smith as Professor McGonagall Miranda Richardson as Rita Skeeter Robert Pattinson is said to with that pesky scar. As 14 year old wizard in training Harry Potter prepares for his fourth year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, he is played by nightmares of a dark lord who killed his parents and left that nasty, increasingly painful lightning bolt scar on his forehead. In those tormented dreams Harry sees the diminished Lord Voldemort plotting with his evil minions. Their goal, restore Voldemort's former power and finish off the boy wizard once and for all. The first sign that something is amiss occurs during the selection process for the prestigious True Wizard Tournament. A student from each of three European schools of witchcraft gets to compete in its celebrated, perilous games. No one under 17 is eligible. After the lucky trio is formally announced with much fanfare, the crowd is shocked when a fourth name emerges from the mystical goblet of fire, Harry Potter. An outrage. Did he cheat? Is this a vain grab for glory? His peers think so, which makes Harry an outcast even, in the eyes of his best friend, Ron Weasley. Regardless of how his name was illegally manipulated into the giant chalice, the flaming goblet's word is final and sooner reluctant Harry Potter finds himself risking life and limb for eternal glory against older, far more skilled wizards. Lined up for Harry and Goblet of Fire or Angry Murrayfolk, a fire-breathing dragon and a killer hedge are manicured into an enormous maze. There's also a climactic showdown with Voldemort in the flesh. However, none of those trials compares to Harry's most daunting challenge finding a date for the Yule Ball. Yes, they finally reach that age. In addition to spells, spills and thrills, this fourth and darkest chapter, so far, in J.K. Rowling's bewitching saga finds friends Harry, Ron and Hermione facing off against hormones and all of the awkwardness and angst that comes with adolescence. Positive elements Harry proves himself virtuous by putting the welfare of others ahead of his own glory and safety. Despite the psychological fog induced by the maze, Harry is clear-headed enough to rescue a fallen competitor rather than let him perish. He then insists they share the prize. His underwater heroics save a girl's life at personal expense, and the tournament committee sees fit to honor his selflessness with a reward for outstanding moral fiber in spite of conflict and misunderstandings, loyal friends stand by one another. Hermione boldly speaks out on behalf of a classmate in crisis. The Weasleys are a close-knit clan generous to Ron's friends. A fallen student is honored for being kind, honest, brave and true. Hogwarts headmaster Albus Dumbledore calls for unity, friendship and cooperation among students from different schools and cultures. Viewers are reminded of how Harry's mother sacrificially gave her life to save him as a baby. It is deemed unlawful to use three unforgivable curses designed to control, torture or kill. Spiritual elements without magic and the occult there is no story. Supernatural goings on inhabit every corner of the film. Harry and others fly on brooms, wield magic wands and utter incantations. Humans are transformed into animals and hybrids words recited skyward cause clouds to form dark, foreboding symbols. Objects are endowed with the ability to transport anyone touching them from one place to another. While navigating the hedge maze, a competitor is bewitched Harry as an encounter with Moaning Myrtle, the ghost of a student murdered in the girls' restroom. A disturbing scene in a graveyard finds one of Voldemort's totes tossing the shriveled wizard into a cauldron before adding other ingredients, including his own hand, that fuel in the cobra transformation. The spirits of Voldemort's most recent kills appear to Harry and talk to him. Sexual content young men and women are flushed with a newfound awareness of the opposite sex, though their interaction remains innocent. Still, the camera lingers on a group of girls' backsides wiggling in unison. While dancing with a woman, Hagrid's hand wanders south of her waist, she is quick to move it back. A giggling female ghost makes a game out of trying to see Harry naked, through the suds of his bath. Hermione backpedals after describing our reticent new boyfriend to Harry as more of a physical being, leaving viewers with no reason to think the couple has gone very far, physically. Violent Kane student is heard by a blast from a wand. So is an old man unfortunate enough to be caught eavesdropping on Voldemort's plans. An evil servant cuts off his own hand and draws blood from Harry's arm to cast a spell. A high-ranking official is found dead. Voldemort assaults Harry, both verbally and with powerful magic. The Death Eaters, a sinister, clan-like group with pointy black hats, crash the Quidditch World Cup event, creating chaos and decimating a campground by hurling fireballs, Harry gets knocked unconscious. 
A fire-breathing dread knocks Harry about, chases him through the air and stalks him on a rooftop before it plummets into a chasm. During an underwater trial, Potter is accosted by octopus-like creatures that nearly drown him. He's bitten on the hand by an owl and a bowl full of squirming snacks a boy possessed by an evil spirit attacks an opponent who was then entangled by vines and dragged into the maze wall. The walls also threaten to crush people. Roots erupt and wrap themselves around another boy whose life is saved at the last minute. Alastair Maddie Moody, Hogwarts' latest defense against the dark arts teacher, casts tortuous spells on a bug before killing it. Professor Snape whacks disruptive boys over the head with a book. Crude or profane language Ron has the habit of saying bloody H, and angrily tells Harry to, PSS office student exclaims oh my god Harry uses the phrase I don't give a D and drug and alcohol content Matt eyes desperate sips from a flask turn out to be doses of a potion, though for most of the film we're led to believe he's drinking alcohol. A visiting headmistress notes that her carrot horses drink only malt whiskey. Other negative elements the audience is made to feel good about Matt eyes pragmatic disregard for rules and protocol. Some images, skulls, serpents, headstones, etc., may not be spiritual or violent per se, but they convey an aura of wickedness and death. Conclusion Although I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, I can't question this film's quality on an artistic level. The production values are amazing. The architecture and fantastic European locales are gothic yet charming. Central characters grow in interesting ways, while newly introduced ones notably Miranda Richardson's gossip columnist and Brendan Gleeson's pirate-like professor with a goofy, roving artificial eye are quirky and energetic. First-time Potter director Mike Newell had hard choices to make about what parts of the mammoth book to leave out, God would still clocks into two and a half hours. Yet manages to create a cohesive product, and does a good job at marrying the story's bustling action with quieter moments of coming of age teen turmoil. Nevertheless, no matter how skillfully the story gets told or how selfless, ethical and heroic Harry may be, it's impossible for me to invest myself in a series that glamorizes witchcraft. It's easy to laugh when spineless bully Draco gets turned into a ferret. But it gets harder to make light of the sorcery when a potion requires that a man hack off his own hand, borrow a bone from a rotting corpse and drain blood from Harry's arm. Whether it's grim treachery or comic relief, the film's wall-to-wall -wall sorcery is birthed from a faulty worldview that taps into the occult and never recognizes any divine authority. Unlike The Lord of the Rings and The Chronicles of Narnia, the entire series is built on a shaky spiritual foundation that sends young fans confusing messages about the morality and merits of the dark arts. Of course, this is film for families that consider the supernatural sin that binds Harry Potter together more trouble than it's worth probably put the kibosh on it a long time ago. The ones still would they have decided, either A, sorcery isn't a big deal, or B, while they oppose real-life witchcraft, non-stop spells and incantations are acceptable when used as a literary device. Even those in the go-with-it camp may find their patience tested with Gauntlet of Fire, the first film to warrant a PG-13 rating. It's extremely grim at times and even features the death of a Hogwarts student. I was amazed at the number of small children seated around me in the theater. At what point will moms and dads who've been saying yes to voracious young Potter fans decide that things have gone too far? This could be it. Dumbledore warns Harry, soon we must face the choice between what is right and what is easy they're not the only ones.